Good morning, beautiful being. <sighs> Monday morning, and it's actually a little chilly here, hence the hat. Um, amazing, you know, it was so hot yesterday, and now it's not. And that's nice, really. Heat is great, I like it cool too. And let me show you some of the garden. So here we are. It's always a little bit sort of not much happening at this time of year, in terms of flowers anyway, because everything's drying up. Um, but here we have a summer jasmine. Um, smells good. And this is a plant that I rescued. Um, I saw it growing on the neighbor's fence and then the neighbor changed. Um, and they did some cleaning out and I noticed, and I thought, oh, I'm going to ask for that. And I noticed that they just yanked it out. So um, I went and looked through the pile of plants and there it was and I pulled it out and stuck it in the ground that grew. Morning Heather, morning Julian. Here's the pink hydrangea. Um, and there's weeds and, you know, oh, look, a very few late roses. Give me some focus. Come on, camera. There we go. So, yes, this is, this is Monday morning. This is something I like. It's just the fact that I'm standing in the garden here, but so what? This rose, you know, it has these huge canes, which of course get covered in flowers. You can see there were flowers. I don't bother to prune or deadhead this one. Um, it just grows like a mad thing. And I will have to take off these really big canes because it gets hard to mow the lawn. But there you go. And look, we have an odd little teeny tiny geranium flower here this is a proper geranium not a pelagonium it's a geranium and you know geraniums by their foliage which always looks something like this um and the soldiers and sailors is looking a little bit you know worn now but there it is what else have we got more hydrangeas not so many flowers this year at least not yet. I pruned them all, and that's probably why. You have to prune them or they get long and leggy and miserable. So, you know, as you can see, this is all of summer. These are... Remember Love in the Mist in spring? Well, these... All right, there we are. We've had our bump. See, there you go. Now you can see the seed pods. Quite beautiful. Hello, Moss Moss. It's beautiful to see you this morning. We're just out in the garden looking at summer, which looks like this. Um, and, oh, things I need to prune. Giovanni, good morning. This is the magnolia, which has taken a very long time. Oh, bumpy. We have bumpy internet today. It's taken a very long time to reach a meter and a half high, but it's getting much bigger faster now. So, you know, and all the mulching that I need to pull out from between the ghost plants, which is, um, which are growing. I pruned those not long ago. What else have we got here? The most graceful thing here at the moment is the fennel, which as you can see is a wild crazy thing and um, it's beautiful and you can see it's a parsley relative. There's the flower, aren't they gorgeous, you know, it grows wild here, it's a real weed and I will never let it seed or I'll have a million of them, but it is beautiful and I enjoy that beauty and there is the parsley. So. All right, let me get to the point today. And it was just a little comment that one of you made um, last week, and I can't remember because last week was like 60 years ago, um, about needing to be more diligent in creating your life, you know, making time and doing the thing. And it just made me think of how... <laughs> It really made me think of my own work ethic, oh my god, and it made me think of how much effort I put into things over the years, because I thought that was the way to make stuff happen. Um, and there is diligence, and I certainly apply myself, and consistency is really important in, in creating anything. But the thing is, it's got to be a labour of love. If you want to create a life that you're going to love... You actually can't do that by thinking, oh, I've got to get up and create my life. Oh, I've got to go and meditate. Oh, I've got to go and visualize or 
hear a size or smell a size or taste a size or touch a size and you was you know visualizing if you want a red car and and you visualize a you know you visualize a red car you're going to end up with a picture of a red car on your wall you really don't want to visualize things you want to sense them you want to use all of your senses and put yourself in the picture driving the car hearing the sound of it smelling whatever it you know that is creating it's much more visceral it's much more um, immediate it's much more here it's much more this is happening now and to do that it can't be something that you feel like oh god I've got to get in this bloody hamster wheel and make it turn again today because in the place where we create and this applies all the time whether we're aware of it or not in the place where we create which is the unified field which is this limitless field a field of limitless possibilities it's full of frequency it's full of information Poriwa, morning beautiful um and everything exists there in that place what you think is immediately instantly I'm going to tell you a cute story now. <laughs> Something that I, I heard Joe Dispenza, who of course is the man that whose, whose teachings I practice and find actually work, which is why I talk about them so much. Um, and he was talking about a time in his life when he was, he was making a point and it didn't matter to me, he wanted it more than sleep. He was chasing the mystical and he would get up early in the morning um, and go and do his work because the brain chemistry is right to have really amazing things happen and he came out of his body one time thought oh that was really cool and as soon as he noticed it he slapped he was snapped straight back in and he kept doing this um and you know and and every time oh okay so i'm out of my body right i'm more used to that now i wonder if i can go into the next room he gets to the wall and thinks oh hang on no 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 you know and back to his body and then he works out that he can go through a wall this is, you know, it, over time, over practicing. And then about, there was one time he said, you know, I, I, I'm going to go somewhere else. He went through a wall. He says, I ended up between two cucumbers in the fridge. Took me ages to work out where I was. This is not meditation, right? He's practicing leaving his body and going doing things. Thoughts are things. This is the thing. Because as soon as he was thinking oh there's a wall in the way there was a wall in the way and he couldn't go through it and then he had to work out how it was if you're out of your body and and the wall is no barrier what that's like and as soon as he worked that out and practiced it he could go through it so he had some really funny experiences in that period of time when he was practicing this business of you know whatever I think instantly is and in the unified field whatever we think feel sense everything instantly is and I'm becoming more aware of this myself as I I don't know as I play as I explore as I practice so a unified field is where we all create all of the time it's just many of us don't realize that most of the world has no clue that they're creating all the time Yosef it is lovely to see you good morning and we create by being The universe must endorse who you and I are being. It can't endorse what we want. It can't endorse the wild thought that says, oh, wouldn't that be fabulous? While all the time our body is saying that's impossible. Are you joking? Stop thinking that crazy thought. It's not happening. It has to endorse who we're being. So if we are being fearful, if we are being angry, if we are being resentful, if we are being what competitive, whatever it is, the universe has to endorse that. It's a sum total thing. You can't say, universe, endorse this part of my thinking and feeling, but not that. Because in the unified field, it's all unified. You're just a frequency. And you have to manifest more of whatever you're, the sum total of your frequency is. It's the law. There's no way to get around that or to fool it or to fake it you can't fake it till you make it in the unified field you can only be it and become it and practice it and learn it but it's got to be a holistic thing so getting back to my point about you know oh i got to create my life today oh fuck this is such a lot of work what are you creating in that moment all this resistance and reluctance and drudgery 
and I'm turning a wheel and I have to do all of this stuff to make something happen in the future. That's what you're creating. That I have to do, 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 do for something to happen in the future. Create that, it's never going to happen. It will always be in the future. You will always be turning the treadmill and never actually having anything arrive. We actually talked about this last week, you know. Don't make it, good things are coming to me. Good things are here. And then experience what those things are. It's this weird thing because, you know, we're used to... We're used to the idea that you have to have the thing in your life and then you can feel excited about it. But what I understand now is that we get to be what we desire and then it can come to us. Maria, good morning. And, and you know, and that's all very well and dandy um, because, oh, great, that's fantastic, Maddie. I'm going to imagine myself wealthy. I'm going to imagine myself having enough to do what I desire to do in life. You know, whatever. I can imagine, I'm going to imagine myself healthy. And you can do that and, and you can even really connect to it. And then you finish and it's like, well, shit, I've still got this serious disease. I've still got bills I can't pay. You know, I'm still facing homelessness, whatever. Yeah, fine, thanks, fantastic, okay. This is the paradox and the, the balancing act. And I am surrounded, and I'm, I'm kind of grateful that it's not exactly where I'm at right now. But I have dear friends around me who are facing these things right now. And it's really interesting for me to look at what they're facing and in myself hold the space that somehow yes they've created it and they're, they're very consciously creating something else and what happens in me still and which is the, the creation point for me is okay am I going to look at that with fear and anxiety and thinking oh I can't see how that's going to be solved oh no it's going to you know or am I going to stand in the space where I know, because I keep seeing it right, just because I can't see the answer doesn't mean it isn't coming, doesn't mean it's not there, I just can't see it. So, you know, which reality am I going to stand in and inhabit and live and breathe and smell and touch and taste? The me that's fearful for my friends or the me that is then being the abundance that they also need to create for themselves at the same time as we're facing three-dimensional quote-unquote reality that sees something quite different love morning great to see you it's a real it's a dance it really is you know and I, I say a dance it's like what I mean it's this paradox it's this thing where everything in our intellect and our thinking and by the by the way remember your thinking your mind the architecture of your brain is entirely a product of your past so everything that you think and feel and if it's all based on your past it's all about what you know now if you want something new in your life it's got to come from something you don't know but the unknown scares us because we can't, you know, I can't control this. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know it's gonna ha how it's going to happen. So I'm afraid because I can't see how it's going to happen. And yet you're asking for something to be unknown and new in your life. Deborah, good morning. And that's the challenge. You know, am I going to trust the unknown? Which if you look back in your life and you see all the times that you were afraid and all the times that you couldn't see how it was going to work out and somehow it did. And if you look back at that and you think, hang on a moment, I didn't trust the unknown back then because I didn't realize that was what I needed to do. And yet here I am. It, it turned out okay. What if I just make a kind of a line in the sand that says, the unknown has never let me down. Why don't I start to make that more of a reality? Something that I actually, you know, when I'm looking at circumstances, I think, oh, shit, I can't see. It's like, okay, unknown, I don't know. But I'm going to just at least acknowledge that you didn't let me down before. Maybe you're not going to let me down this time. And maybe this time, because I want to create something new and wonderful in my life, I'm going to step out of the hamster wheel. 
and I'm not going to go into effort and I'm not going to go into drudgery thinking that that's going to give me what I want. Because for me, you know, work harder, do more was just, I had a work ethic, I still do. I still do. I really do have a work ethic. But, you know, when I was at university studying the violin, four hours practice a day, that was it. I just put it in. And I remember some of it was grind. And, yeah, you know, I was talented, but I think I'd do it very differently now. I know I'd do it very differently now. Let me check my clock. Okay, we're doing all right. So (sighs) creating your life... If you're doing it from a space of, oh God, I've got to do this visualization every day. Well, like I said, don't do visualization. Put yourself there. The visual is only part of the information that you need to fire and wire in your brain to make it real, right? And the whole process of how you do that, that's up to you. There are many, many ways to do it. You all know, or most of you know, that I absolutely love the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza because I find it so effective for doing this. It actually works, and I'm interested in stuff that works. It's beautiful. Oh, my God, the places I went this morning, creating. Ah, I can't describe it. It's just awesome. And how much I've transformed and how much effort I've been able to let go of because I, you know... I used to work so hard and the better I get at this the easier my life becomes and it doesn't mean I'm not doing stuff I'm more productive than I've ever been I'm getting more done than I ever have I'm physically stronger than I've ever been but it's this paradox because I just don't work as hard inside myself and I don't feel as driven And this terrible fear, there's not enough time. I can't get it all done. You know, that really used to drive me like a like a slave master. And I've stepped out of that. That's that's a self that I have only recently really stepped into. And it's something I don't think I've got time to say this. It's something that I picked up again from I've been doing an online training with Joe. And we're talking about beliefs and perceptions, right? And a very common belief is there's not enough time. I don't have enough time. And he told us what his belief is about time now, because that was a big one for him. And I mean, you know, if you have any idea what his life is like, it's insane. He has so much to do. And he says, this this is his belief about time now. I live in no time. No time being the unified field, right? Being quantum, being all time is in one moment I live in no time I accomplish everything and I heard that and I thought I'm going to make that mine and I've been stepping into that oh my god what a release what a relief um but you got to really know what the unified field is you really got to have that feeling inside you and realize that's where everything is available right now in an instant and you start to inhabit that and then um Things do, I I can't explain it. I just get more done. So, if you find yourself feeling like your life is a hamster wheel and your spiritual work is something you must do and your, you know, your, your, your work ethic is squawking at you saying, you're not working hard enough. Morning, Jay. Lovely to see you, beautiful. Um, maybe just question that. Because that's effort, that's struggle, that's trying, that's pushing. And creation happens in no time because you become it. Ah, yeah, ease is, so, ease is a really great word and I lived and breathed ease for a long time <clears throat> because effort was so deeply ingrained in my being. It was just massive effort 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 try 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 and of course the whole thing was I was on the hamster wheel and I never got off and I never created results I was just always working towards the thing so getting out of that hamster wheel getting out of the thought I have to do this I have to tick all these boxes and then hopefully I'll get to the line at the bottom oh I'm very glad you're tuning in Jade bless you (laughs) I am having a blessed beautiful day thank you so you know I didn't really imagine that I'd be talking about ease, but it's sort of deeper than that, where we begin. 
if you're used to struggle, if you're used to effort, if you're used to feeling like you have to shift a mountain just to get a breadcrumb of reward or desire or what you want in your life, realize that that's actually the thing you've got to let go of and go for ease. Delight and joy and all of that stuff comes later, but ease is kind of the doorway into these things. And just notice if your hard work ethic, if you're, oh God, I've got to do this again, I'm supposed to visualize for five minutes today, I'm supposed to meditate for an hour, and it's like, oh God, I've got to sit and look at a candle, or whatever it is you do. If you're not excited about it, find something you are. Sharon, morning, morning, lovely to see you too. Hey! Um, find something that, I was going to say, find something that delights you. Find something that you can line up with. Find something that calls you and be prepared for it to change, you know? Be prepared for it to change because we change. Things that were just perfect for me even six months ago are not now. And what's perfect for me now is not going to be perfect for me in six months. We grow. Hi, Bob. I know I'm out of time, <laughs> but it's lovely to see you and it's lovely to greet you. Do enjoy the replay if you came on at the end. And let me show you the day. Just quickly. That's the day. It's a very ordinary looking um, Wellington day. And you can see the clouds drifting over. Um, and that's because we have a northerly. Good morning, Kim. Just showing you the day before I finish. And there's the birds. And, you know, it's just a very typical Wellington morning. It's lovely to be with you all. Thank you for sharing with me. Big love. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.